So we're down here at Sun and Fun Lakeland, Florida, and I've run over here to the, what's this, the antique warbird section, sort of? Uh, the Vintage Hospitality Center. Vintage Hospitality Center, and I've run into an old friend of mine, uh, Robert Bosley. Actually been to his facility uh, way up in the Missouri area. Correct. Robert, you and I have been doing this for, what, going on 20, 24 years now? I think this is our 27th year here. 27th right? year. Yep. And every year that I come down to the show, you have another airplane for me to interview you on. That's correct. We, we try to bring a different airplane every year. Now, what's this one called? Uh, this is a Newport 28. Now, what's the story on this airplane? I understand most of the time when you and I get together, you've just br finished something and just rushed down here with it, and it still has some rivets that you've got to pull on it. This one here looks ready to fly or has been flown. Yeah, most generally, you'll see our new prototypes. We typically will display something down here. This particular airplane uh, we built uh, started 10 years ago, finished approximately nine years ago in conjunction with uh, Blake Thomas and Sandy Thomas. And uh, they live in the area, so he flew the airplane down this year and put it on display for us. Now, is this the gentleman that built the airplane then? Yes, it is. Well, why don't you pass the microphone over to him and let me have a little chat with him. Now, I've interviewed Robert over and over and over about his airplanes. I don't often get to some, get to talk to someone that has actually built one of his aircraft. How was this aircraft when you built it? Like how did it how did it go together for you? Well you know it was a real unique experience. I had uh, built another airplane before that and uh, this airplane uh, seemed to be even easier than the kit. And uh, the uh, kit was an outstanding kit to work with. Uh, it went relatively quickly. Uh, it was about 950 hours and nine months and uh, Robert was very helpful on uh, building the kit and making recommendations while we were building the kit. Now what type of construction does he use it? I mean this looks like a, a World War I aircraft but it doesn't look like it's the type of construction that was used back then. Well it, it really wasn't. Uh, it, Robert's done a really good job here of melding modern building techniques and materials into an aircraft that looks like a World War I aircraft. So the innards of this airplane are a modern, safe aircraft, while the outers look like a World War I aircraft. So it's really a pleasure to fly, too. Now, were there any problems? Like, is it done from a set of plans that you work from? Or how do you, how do you start this project? Well, you start the project, you get a hold of Robert Bosley Aerodrome Airplanes, and uh, decide what type of kit you want, what type of airplane, and I wanted a full-scale Newport 28 because that was the first fighter that we ever went to war with as Americans during World War I. And during the Gulf War, I was a fighter pilot in the 27th Squadron, which flew that airplane. It's what's the markings that are on this airplane right now. And since I couldn't afford an F-15, I needed a Newport 28 instead. I got our first fighter. Now, where did you build it then? Uh, was it is it capable of being built, say, in a one car size of a one or a two car garage? Yes, you could. You could build it in a one or two uh, size car garage. Uh, you could actually do builder's assist, which I did uh, part of that here at, with Robert uh, in um, Holden, Missouri, and that was a great experience because uh, if you have a question, he's right near you. He can answer it. He's the guy that designed the airplane, and Robert did some extra special stuff when he designed the airplane because he put more of a modern airfoil on it so the aircraft are more stable, they fly better, uh, they don't have the uh, some of the unusual uh, characteristics of the other World War I airplanes that were difficult to fly. These are really nice to fly like a, a, a Super Cub or a Cub. Okay. Now when you're building the airplane did you require any special tooling? Was there a whole bunch of stuff that you had to buy to finish the kit off? No, not really. It's just basic, uh, you know, it's a lot of pop rivets, uh, you know, just basic tools that you need to build a, an airplane. And not necessarily an airplane, but just any tools uh, work, too. Um, and it was very simple, and uh, the process was uh, very good. And if you had a problem, Robert was uh, on the phone immediately. You could talk to him, or you could actually go visit him in person. Um, and that was very helpful. Now, I noticed this has got a big propeller on the front of it, so I imagine it's got some sort of power in there behind it to push it. What uh, t engine are you using on this? The engine we're using right now is a Lycoming 0290D, which puts out about 125 horsepower. Uh, it's a very reliable aviation uh, engine that's been used in many aircraft, like uh, the Tri-Pacer is one of the aircraft that it was used in. Uh, but you have a choice 
of what type of engines you want. If you want a different look, you can put a radial engine on it. Those, some of those are experimental. Or you can go ahead like I did and put a regular aircraft engine on it, uh, which is I was we're looking for a very reliable engine to fly around them. And what kind of what kind of money would you have tied up in this whole um, kit with the engine and everything ready to fly? Well, normally uh, the kits run uh, you know less than about fifteen thousand dollars. An engine runs around that same area between uh, ten to fifteen thousand uh, dollars. Prop that type of thing and other things. So you're looking at between thirty-five to forty thousand dollars, and it's a single-seat aircraft. Uh, but he has, also has a two-seat aircraft that uh, my wife and I were, had the opportunity to build, and it's about the same price, too. Yeah. Now, what kind of performance are you getting out of this airplane than when you're flying it? I'm getting very close to the original performance, even with uh, the modern airfoil on it. Uh, the speeds are relatively close. In fact, this airplane is about two miles an hour faster than the original airplane. Um, it cruises about the same speed. Uh, so the, a lot of the performance is uh, similar, except it's a much more reliable platform. Now, I notice you've got some decorations on here, machine guns and stuff like that. Is this something that you had to source out to, to, to put on there? Well, actually, uh, Robert Bosley has a, uh, uh, can actually sell you those type of machine guns and for your aircraft, depending on what aircraft you've selected. Uh, or you can find them uh, you know, out in the market. Uh, where other people have developed copies of uh, those type of machine guns, depending if you pick a German airplane or uh, an Allied airplane. Uh, so those are available if you want to make the aircraft look as realistic as possible. So you've got this airplane up and flying now then. Uh, have you made any uh, trips with it at all, or is it all just around the patch? We sure have, Dave. We uh, actually took the airplane from Houston, Texas to Dayton, Ohio for Dawn Patrol and that was a 16-hour flight total uh, that took two and a half days cruising along at about 75 to 80 miles an hour and around uh, 1,000 to uh, 3,000 feet and it was very interesting because it was the time of the year when they were burning the fields so it was almost like a battle was below you so you're smelling the smoke and living the life of a World War I pilot flying below the battlefield so I had a good idea of and it wasn't, it wasn't as easy as I thought it was. It was a, a real challenge. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time. You can give the mic back to Robert here. Thank you, boy. So, Robert, how many aircraft do you have in your stable now? Uh, we currently have 26 different models available in kit form. Now, are any of those, say, in the ultralight category? Uh, yes, we do. We actually have got the Dream Classic, uh, the Dream Fantasy, and then we have uh, one of our ultralights, uh, the Eindecker E3 qualifies in the ultralight category. And what kind of money would somebody have tied up in them, uh, ready to fly? Uh, the little Dream Classic kit sells for $39.95. Uh, the Eindecker sells for $54.95. And typically, you'd have another four to 6000 in the engine instruments and prop if you, know, you bought new stuff there. Now, what type of construction, like everything's hidden in this airplane so we can't see it, but what kind of construction does do you use in these kits? I mean, they're all basically the same. Correct. Yeah, all aircraft have probably better than 80% common parts. Uh, it is aluminum tube and gusset rivet construction, gusset technique. Uh, spars or uh, round tube. Um, just pretty much conventional construction we've been using, you know, for, for many, many, well, over 20 years now. So if somebody wanted to get one of these kits and get it um, in the works. So what's the easiest way to do it? Uh, just give me a call at uh, Aerodrome Aeroplanes or visit our website. Uh, give me a call if you have any questions on airplane. I'd like to sit down and visit with you. Maybe we can help you build an airplane. Okay. Now you're probably going to Oshkosh and you're going to bring something new there for me? Uh, we will. Yes, we are. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time then, Robert. Thank you. Have a good day.